In tonight's Dateline Defense, Donald Trump's foreign policy positions. In an interview with the New York Times, Trump said he would be open to the idea of Japan and South Korea having their own atomic arsenals. The U.S. stations tens of thousands of troops in both countries. Trump would withdraw them unless Japan and South Korea contributed more to their cost. For insight and analysis, I'm joined by Colonel Douglas McGregor. He's a decorated combat veteran, Ph.D., and executive vice president of the Burke McGregor Group. His new book, Margin of Victory, is out this June. Doug, the U.S., Japan, and South Korea all declined to comment specifically on Trump's statement, but they also touted their strong alliance and commitment to denuclearization. Now, is Trump onto something here, or is this just crazy talk? In reality, uh, Mr. Trump is raising some important questions that have been on people's minds now for at least two decades. I think so. Yeah, absolutely. First of all, there, there are very few people today privately who believe in what we call extended nuclear deterrence. This is the assumption that if the Chinese for some reason invaded South Korea or attacked Japan, that we would put our cities at risk of being destroyed by Chinese intercontinental ballistic missiles by responding with nuclear weapons. So I think he's he's pointing to something that's that's on people's minds. It needs to be discussed. The second part of it, of course, is that Japan and Korea are immensely wealthy, very successful. Their armed forces are first rate, vastly better than anything in North Korea. And frankly, the Chinese would not want to tangle with them. So I think uh, the idea of withdrawing our forces is so, is something whose time has come. We need to talk about it instead of acting as though it's an impossibility. Trump would also consider halting the purchase of oil from Saudi Arabia unless they provide troops to fight ISIS. What kind of impact would that have on the U.S. and on the Middle East? Well, let's talk about the impact on Saudi Arabia, because Saudi Arabia has declined routinely to really pick up its end and, and fight alongside the rest of us against anyone. Its performance in South Yemen has been appalling. No one really believes that the, the Saudi armed forces if they were called into action, would stand up against much of anyone. And I think Mr. Trump really wanted to call their bluff on that score. Then secondly, I think he's also trying to send another signal. And that is, look, the oil market today is global. There are lots of places from which to get oil. We have enormous potential here inside the United States and North America and Canada. And he's trying to tell the Saudis that that leverage which they've had over us in the past simply won't work in the future. It's true. Washington Post reports after months of speculation, Trump has named five foreign policy advisors. Here they are. Former Defense Department Inspector General Joseph Schmitz, former Hudson Institute Research Fellow George Papadopoulos, former Fox News analyst Walid Ferris, retired Army Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg, longtime energy executive Carter Page. Doug McGregor's list is not on there. <laughs> but, Doug, these picks baffle a lot of people. What do you make of them? Well, I know three of the people very well who are on the list, at least in terms of professional interaction. Uh, Joe Schmitz was a very fine inspector general. He's a solid uh, citizen and uh, was often frustrated with his inability to impose accountability to the extent that he wanted to when he was uh, working for Mr. Rumsfeld. Mr. Carter really understands the energy world. He has a lot of experience with the Russians, and, and no doubt that's part of the reason he is there. And Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg is not a member of the mafia in the Pentagon. He's an outsider who thinks and looks at alternatives to the status quo. So I can understand why they would be there. The others I don't know as well. Uh, but again, we should welcome the fact that Mr. Trump is submitting names to the American public that people don't know. Good the point. biggest problem we have here is this revolving door. Yeah. It's a country club. Yes. Same people every every four years. Trump has also questioned NATO's relevance, a position attacked by his rival for the Republican nomination, Senator Ted Cruz. It's an issue we've covered before. Does NATO have any teeth? NATO has been struggling in the minds of people in Washington, Paris, and London for relevance since the Soviet state system collapsed in Eastern Europe. So the short answer is no. And the long-term question is, if, if NATO is to survive and, and be, be this great alliance that everyone claims it is, what's it going to do? And what Mr. Trump has said is, look, we're happy to participate. We want close and good relations with Europeans. But Europeans have to decide whether or not they think their countries are worth defending because we can't do it largely alone. That's the issue. And that's an issue that every American should be concerned about right now. Why? Because of affordability. 
we simply cannot afford to spend on the scale that we have in the past. Now, Doug, Trump has also called for defense cuts, an unusual position among Republican candidates. According to a survey by the University of Maryland, it's a popular position with U.S. voters, but it's tough to tell what to cut because the Pentagon is in serious need of an audit. Explain that. Well, two things. You, first of all, you've pointed to one of the reasons that uh, Mr. Trump on the right and Mr. Sanders or Senator Sanders on the left enjoy so much support because so many Americans who feel strongly about these issues are simply not represented in Washington. If you go back over the polling data for the last 25 or 30 years, Americans have on the whole been opposed to interventions and opposed to hikes in defense spending. So that's not really news. I think as we get closer to the election in November, Mr. Trump will begin talking about something that you never ever hear in Washington, but he is a businessman understands. It's called return on investment. And he's going to make the argument that we spend an awful lot of money. What do we actually get for our investment? And that's the issue. The second part of it is, of course, this ugly word that no one in Washington likes to use, accountability. Ooh. And that's why we need an audit, because we have too many senior officers and civilians in the Department of Defense who, when asked where has the money gone, can't give you an answer. Telling it like it is, Colonel Douglas McGregor, Executive Vice President of the Burke McGregor Group. Thanks, Doug. Thank you.